Michael, Michael Montero here with promoter Lou Tabella. <laughs> there you go, exactly. Tomorrow night, his fighter, Reggie's Pro Gray. And am I saying that? Is it Pro Gray? It's Regis like the high school I went to. Like like, okay. like St. Regis. Saint, uh, I've heard Regis Pro Gray. It's Regis Pro Gray. Okay, because I've you heard Pro Gray. I've yeah. heard a thousand because, different... Because a thousand people mispronounce his name. But it's Regis Pro Gray. Okay, Regis Pro Gray is defending his WBC Diamond Junior Welterweight title against Jose or Juan Jose Velasco and a top ranked car in the ESPN. So let's talk about that real quick. Uh, if he wins this fight, he goes into the World Boxing Super Series. Yeah, and, and, and he goes into the World Boxing Super okay, Series. Okay, okay. <laughs> he goes into the World Boxing Super <laughs> Series. Um, to be honest, it has me a little bit spooked when you have something planned in advance right. of, of, a big, of a fight. And, you know, I don't think Velasco has the athletic ability of Regis or the pedigree of Regis, um, but he's a big dude. If you looked at him at that weigh-in, he's a big dude. Yeah, absolutely. Samson Lukowitz, Samson, my, my buddy Samson Boxing, he doesn't promote Stooges. Right. So if the guy can't fight a little bit, at least Samson's not gonna, gonna promote him. So this guy has, has some, he's got a little bit of power, He's a big dude, never lost experience to beat, and he's got nothing to lose. Right. So I'd be lying if I said I'm not a little bit nervous. I'd be lying if I said um, I'm looking past tomorrow night. But clearly I'm looking past tomorrow night because we did a contract with the World Boxing Super Series. And that's what, that's what I, I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, very few American. I think in the first season, one American fighter went into that tournament. Very few American fighters have even considered doing it, right? Regis Progre is on the cusp of becoming a star. He's right there. He's a, a fight or two away from really, I think, breaking through. What made you guys jump with so many other promoters, the top ranks and guys like that? You look at Gilberto Ramirez. They didn't want to put him in the tournament, right, in the first season uh, for the Super Middleweight Tournament. What made you guys jump? Three fights in one year and less than one year. Right. That That's very enticing. The money. Man, it's all about the money. And the World Boxing Super Series is a tremendous potential paydays if you win. If you go in with your fighter and you believe he's going to get knocked out in the first round, or that the matchups don't favor him, then you have to think very carefully about it um, because you can control opponents and level of opposition much better in the free marketplace than you can in the tournament. It's eight guys selected because right. they're believed to be competitive and top notch guys. So. You don't have the, the ability to bail out in round two or three if you keep winning. You have to follow the course of the tournament. I mean, if Regis, you know, there are some very good fighters in this tournament. Baranchek's a good fighter. Relic is a very good fighter. Taylor. Taylor is an excellent fighter. Um, Tryanovsky's a decent fighter if he gets, he's got to get past Relic. These guys can fight. Terry Flanagan is the eighth guy in the tournament. Ryan Martin. Um, you know, the tournament's got some, some real good fighters in it. Regis wanted unification bouts. The Ramirez bout really couldn't be made right now. So, in this tournament, there's going to be the IBF bout. In the tournament, there's going to be the WBA bout. So Regis can walk out of this tournament, theoretically, with the diamond belt, the BA belt, and the BF belt. One of the BA 50 belts that they have in each division. Right? Yeah, well, I, mean, I, I didn't want to talk about that. And, I, and, and by the way, my sentiments are similar to yours. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but, but you know what? The real BA champion right now is Relic. Right. And, and Relic's a good fighter, and he's in that tournament. Well, you talked about, okay, all the names you ran off. I mean, it's pretty much a European tournament. Yeah, right. but Bar are you Baranchek fights out of the, uh, out of right. the US now. Right, so, but, but and most of the fights are going to be overseas. How no, do you guys feel about hitting the road? Is part of the deal of you going in that some fights are going to be here in the States? There will be um, potentially fights in the States. Okay, okay. Yeah, the, the, the tournament told us that they intend on doing some of the shows in the States. Um, what but, about the lack of American TV? Does that bother you? Well, I mean... For, for Regis, for the exposure. I, I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, it's a double-edged sword. You have to look at it balance it. I think that the zone's going to spend money marketing yeah. the fights in the tournament, so you'll get impressions from the marketing, even if people aren't running to subscribe to the zone. So I think that, that the marketing will be significant. Um, internationally, the tournament is huge. Right. So, and this is an international marketplace. Right. So Regis wins the tournament, he's a worldwide phenomenon. Even if 
made, I mean, I'm not going to lie, would I have preferred terrestrial or, or, or linear television? Um, for sure, there's right. more eyeballs. Right. Um, but I, I think the opportunity and the money is too great uh, to pass it up. And also the frequency. The fact that he just will afford, if he, God willing, he comes out of tomorrow night, okay. Um, he will, he'll, he'll be the fighter who, who fought closest to the beginning of the tournament. So he will, and then he's going to have three fights, theoretically, in 10 or 11 months. That's four fights in less than a year. Against world-class opposition. Against world-class opposition. Um, there's not enough, I mean, he wants frequency. He wants to be an active champion. Um, this delivered that to him. And if he wins the tournament, he's going to be a wealthy young man. How much does he remind you of Sergio Martinez? Now, what parallels are there? There are, there are, there are great parallels. Let's hear them. Um, they're, they're both not your run in the mill fighter in terms of personalities, um, in terms of, uh, Regis is a cerebral kid, even though he hated school. He's a, he reads, like, constantly. He's read any book you can think of about a great fighter and about boxing. You talk to Regis, he's either read it or he has it and it's on his list. Um, he watches old fight tapes, like, voraciously. And, and like, you know, he, he, he eats up, like, Duran fights and, and old, but he goes back even to, to, you know, the generation before, getting old fight films and watching old fight tapes. It's like a passion for him. He's like a boxing historian. Um, He's an interesting cat just to have a conversation with. I mean, he's had an interesting ride. I mean, he was a, a kid that spent a lot of time in the streets. He was, you know, he played high school football and, and all sorts of high school sports, but hated school. Um, he really, it was in locker room fights and street fights that he learned he could fight. Not by a, a fighting as an amateur right. since he's 10 years old. So it's sort of remarkable to see a guy this good and this polished at his age accomplishing what he's accomplished as a relatively young guy, um, considering he's not someone that was weaned in a boxing ring. Um, and then the other thing about him, the comparison with Sergio, is Sergio did athletic things in the ring that was sort of freaky. And he'd, he'd keep his hands down and he'd shake and bake and move his head. Regis, if you notice, Regis has side to side head movement all the time, not just when a guy's throwing punches at him. He gives weird angles. He could hit you with a left or a right and take you out with either. From that, an awkward angle, too. From awkward situations. Yeah, yeah. But with a comprehension of exactly what he's doing. He, he, Bobby Benton will identify weaknesses in the opponent. Regis won't look at opponent's fight tapes. He refuses to. He wants to go in there and he wants to, he, he wants to hear the game plan from the coach and go in there and do his thing. He doesn't study fight for he listens to what Bobby advises him to do. And then he and then he takes that freaky athletic ability. And Bobby will identify a weakness in an opponent. He does this when he throws a jab. He does that um, you know, when he throws a right hand. He'll, he'll identify a particular weakness. Regis will go in knowing to look out for that weakness. And then he might hit him with a left, he might hit him with a right, he might hit him with a, a punch that looks like it's coming you know, like winding out of nowhere, might hit him with a straight jab, but he'll find a way to exploit that weakness. And he has the freaky athletic ability to allow him to do that in sort of a spectacular fashion. That's the kind of thing that made Sergio so dangerous. Both of those guys, the similarity that I see is they both were um, coachable. They're, they both would listen to their trainers and get their perspectives. But a lot of the things they did, you couldn't teach. Just natural. It's just you were born with a certain athletic ability and a certain sensibility in the ring and a certain, you know, you have that freaky athleticism that Roy Jones had, that Sergio had, and that I see in Regis. Um, he sometimes, like, I, I used to, man, I, I lost some months off of my life with Sergio, with, with the hands down on the side, yeah. Yeah. with the moving around, with the enticing the guy to come forward by dropping his hands intentionally. Um, Regis does some of that same kind of stuff, and it makes me like a, and like, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> I just like, a, we have a tournament. Right, you know, and, but um, 
but then I watch what, what what he's doing, and there's there's a method to his madness, right. and, and he has and he has a pretty good assessment of himself, and he's a very self-aware guy. He knows where the strengths are. He knows what he's been instructed, and then he goes in there and executes. And um, and and as as he said, um, you know, for a long time Martinez wasn't known as a puncher until he started destroying people. I mean, and that Paul Williams knockout, man, that still rings my head. In some ways, though, like when you look at what he did to Zinzer, who was considered yeah. a beast, he ended Zinzer's career in that yeah. fight. Okay. I mean, he beat him every which way. I mean, I mean, he laid beatings on people, Sergio, that they weren't used to. With a body, by the way, that had been failing him long before he even started his campaign in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, Regis has some of that same kind of freaky athletic ability, and, and he he knows he goes into that ring like Sergio did when he realized his speed was power, his awkwardness was power, um, his ability to do things from strange angles was power. He started really developing the thought process that he wanted to end the fight when he could. Um, Regis goes in there with the intention of hurting his opponent. And, and, and um, you know, he said he, did, he gave some very interesting interviews this week about it. Um, in some way, Deontay Wilder, when he made those comments that were so controversial, it was really what Deontay sort of meant, but wasn't so um, uh, blatant about it. Well, he, he, you know, Deontay, Deontay just was being Deontay, and it's, there's no, uh, you know, Deontay doesn't sit there and think. You know, he speaks his truth. Right. And he doesn't worry about like like what he but what he was saying. Deontay Wilder never wanted to hurt somebody, but his point was, Deontay, the fighter, has an alter ego. It's the bronze bomber. The bronze bomber wants to kill his opponent. Regis Progre goes in there with the intent: I want to hurt my opponent. He doesn't want to hurt the guy in a permanent way, but he wants to go in there and he wants to establish the fact that he's the boss. What he said in his something interesting today that he said in the fighter meeting. He said. If I go into a fight, and very early in the fight, I know that the other guy can't take my power, but that I can take his, and I can feel that very early in the fight, in my head, the fight's over. Now now I'm just executing my win. Do you know what I mean? If, yeah. if, if the guy can't hurt me, and, and Bobby Benton said, like, I, you know, Regis has the, the defense ability and the eyes the sight and the athleticism to avoid being hit. But he sort of likes to be hit mm -hmm. if he, the other guy can't hurt, can't hurt him. It, it opens up all these offensive counters, opportunities. Right? Yeah. And, 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 and his counters are lethal. Right. And, and he goes in there with that intent of ending the fight before it goes 12 rounds. And that's the style that you know fans want to see. They want to see that killer instinct. And I think that's why so many people are excited about it. 